Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing really well. This is the fourth chapter of uh, business and technology according to the Kaplan material. And according to the BPP material, it is a short part in your chapter number 10. All right. So basically, information systems and information technology in business. How are you going to leverage? How are you going to use information systems and technology in business so that you can grow your business? And what would be your role as a person, as an accountant or as an employee of an organization on how to leverage this information system technology so that the business can grow? Basically, business and technology paper focuses on how to grow businesses, what are the different structures of business, what are the different cultures in business, what are the different types of uh, organizational structures and stuff. So we have dealt with it already in the first three chapters, uh, which is already there uploaded. And now in this chapter number four, we are going to talk about how are we going to leverage. How are we going to leverage information systems, information technology in business? Mein. All right. And in the next chapter, again, we are going to go back towards uh, the stakeholders of the organization. We are going to talk about stakeholders and then we are going to talk about the micro macro economics. So chapter six, seven, eight is going to be pure economics. Chapter number five is going to be about stakeholders. So let's just get uh, started. Let me just see where my pen is. All right. So here it is. So now. When we talk about information systems and technology, the first thing which comes up or the first thing which you should understand is data. What exactly is data? Now we've heard it many a times that data is the new oil. Data is something which is the new currency. Data is something which is, you know, the new gold mine of uh, businesses. Well, yes, it is how things are going to happen. What can happen? You can predict that based on the data available. You can process that data, make it into information, then use it. So data is something which is completely raw. Matlab usse aap kuch, matlab nikal sakte right now. It is just the availability of data. Now, there are different sets of uh, data available across uh, the globe. The best example, which I always used to give is about Adam Smith, the father of economics. And why did he become the father of economics? Is because in the late 16th, 17th century, you know, in between that, there was a data which was available across the globe for the trade which is happening across countries. Now that data was available for everyone, but he was the person who actually took that data, structured that data, had some insights coming out of that data and made the book Wealth of Nations. And that's how he became the father of economics. So he used that data and then made this particular economics as a subject. All right. So the data is already there. The data is something which we are working on for generations and generations, centuries and centuries. Now, if you just see in here, you would have heard about uh, data analytics, uh, data sciences, data sciences courses, data sciences, um, you know, some particular diploma, some certification, some qualification going around it. And you've heard it recently. It, it was not there around, you know, a decade ago, 10 years ago, five, six years ago. It was not that booming. But why is it right now? And the reason behind is, is the use of internet, social media nowadays. The way internet, social media nowadays is being done, the way content is getting created across internet is huge. It's humongous. And based on that, there's a lot and lot of data which is there available. And based on that data, consumers, sorry, the business owners are taking control or not taking control, I can say, but they making use of the data which is there, which can show consumer preferences. And based on that consumer preferences, they are launching their products accordingly. Like, uh, for example, the best example which I can give is Netflix. Netflix is using data like anything, like, you know, which, which is going well, which type of content is getting viewed, which type of content is getting viewed at what time, in which country, and uh, in which language it is getting viewed. They have a really good set of data out there. And they are also looking out that what is their interest, what is the interest of the consumer. And based on that, they are making content related to it. 
they are trying to produce content related to that only which is having more viewership now previously if you just let, let me just tell you netflix was just like a cd rental type of an organization before cd rental they used to give but now they have their own streaming platform which is uh, netflix itself which we have to pay for subscriptions above that because you know because of these contracts with the content owners and the uh, copyrights issue and stuff like streaming in your platform or they are having their own platforms netflix has ventured into creating producing shows also producing creating content also so now when they are doing that which one to do which one to take which 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 content to take and that's based on the data which is already there available with them now that's number one netflix which i just gave you an example let's take another example another example let's take of uh, zomato or um, swiggy or some some food uh, delivery applications now food delivering application merely if you just see in the food delivering application or uber type of organizations merely they are an aggregator they are not the actual service provider not the receiver nor they have their own raw material which they are actually manufacturing and selling it off they are having an application and on that application they are having millions of users millions of users are coming there and then they have restaurant partners or delivery partners someone who is actually getting there trying to make a solution for it so basically that particular application has nothing of itself so what's happening with this just see look into this what zomato is doing what they are doing in here is that they are looking out with the data which they are having now with the data what are they doing are they looking out for how often the consumer is ordering and stuff now that that becomes a bit personal but what are they doing is that from which location are we getting you know which is the location where more orders are coming up now that's kind of kind of uh, now information which they can use a data which they can use from which place more orders are coming up from which place more orders are coming up and then what they are doing is what type of food is ordered more what type of food is ordered more from which place the orders are coming now when they have these two things in head means inside like you know if they have this type of data believe me this type of data many restaurant owners are actually looking out for that what type of food is ordered more because restaurant owners they don't look out for this is my best dish and i can sell this best dish this this is rarely happening what they want to know is what is consumer buying what is consumer buying okay fine then we'll sell that as simple as that we'll try to sell it in a more tastier manner that's what so if you have the data that which food is sold and at what place it is sold kahan pe bik raha hai wo kaun si cheez bik rahi hai agar aapke paas ye data aapke samne hai then you take a decision ki chalo hame ye location mein ek kitchen kholna chahiye ek ek you know in this particular place we can get more sales and that that's a business decision taken and that's how cloud kitchens are coming up cloud kitchens they are also looking out for like zomato itself they have their own personal kitchens also nowadays they are may, maybe in some other names they are looking out for where is the best place where orders are coming up and which place is it coming up try go ahead and get started with that same goes uh, with amazon amazon they look out for which is the best product being sold in the market now the best product which is sold in the market and which area is it sold now when they have that particular information what can they do they can actually create and manufacture that same particular product because they already have a platform they know what is getting sold more make that and sell it you can sell it at a lesser price and you can market yourself at the top like you yourself sell it that's with the use of data if you go to a supermarket hypermarket you can see normal you know soaps shampoos and stuff some day, daily use stuff you will also see that some daily use products the store name this they have a brand with the name of the store itself because they know what is getting sold more and they sell that so that is 
depending on the data which is there that data is getting converted into information and they're using that information for their business use so i hope you guys are getting the vibe of what is going to happen in this particular session what's going to happen in this particular chapter that how are you using this type of data and information to make your business business grow further ahead that's the main reason in here now data is something which is raw when it is slightly converted and a bit useful then it becomes information now when i talk about information what are the uh, you know when i go towards information i'll even talk about what are the types of uh, you know the attributes of good information but that's coming up next first we look into the types of data now when i say types of data number one you have the quantitative data now quantitative data is something which you can you know numerically say that okay this is a data which is in kgs in rupees and something like that that's quantitative then comes in qualitative data qualitative data was that what are the chances that this product can be sold or according to the history these many number of units are sold according to the history at this point point of time more sales will happen according to a seasonal effect this is going to happen and it's more based on experience then coming up with discrete data discrete data is like you know you can say it is a whole in number it's not uh, it's not partial it's it's complete like there are five people standing in there now you cannot say that it's 5.5 people or 5.4 people you can just say it's five people it's it's complete now that's what is called a discrete data whereas a continuous data you can say that how many kgs is this particular product so you can say it is 5.4 kilos how much time is it going to take you to complete or approximately to come here it can take 45 minutes 47 minutes 49 minutes or 1 hour 20 minutes so it's kind of a continuous data and then we come towards primary data primary data is that data which you yourself collected which you yourself make up a survey try collecting the first responses of that particular consumer or that particular uh, people out there and if suppose someone else is using that particular data that is your that becomes secondary data like zomato is using the data for their own business process further ahead that's kind of a primary data itself but if suppose someone else is using it then it becomes a secondary data most of the times primary data is focused on and primary data is more useful than the secondary data now let's talk about the uh, you know data to information now data to information see only set, set of data the best example which i just gave you was uh, the adam smith data uh, adam smith example the father of economics everybody had that data but nobody actually went on and converted that data into information and that information became knowledge and then wisdom of uh, people and it became a subject called economics now that happened with those people who actually used that data and made it something out of it otherwise data is there available for everyone and very less people make use out of it okay based on this information what what you need to do based on that information what you need to do depending on your own personal experiences which you have all right how how you actually take that data into now we have attributes of good information now this particular chapter is a bit lengthy you can say is a bit uh, kind of uh, explain a lot of explanation is required in here a lot of understanding is required in here so i would recommend you guys to be in here till the end of the session so that you have proper understanding of it now attributes of good information now it is actually the acronym of accurate a c c u r a t e now that's what it is accurate complete cost effective understandable relevant adaptable timely and easy to use now a good information should be accurate it should not be like you know maybe kind of a stuff in there it does not form part of a good information it forms part of you know a partial information which is not that useful a useful information is something which is accurate and which is complete it should not be half hearted or sorry half fully uh, available the other half is not there available it cannot be like that it should have complete uh, details in that it should be complete enough it should not be incomplete a good data is complete and it is also cost effective it should not be like 
you are spending a lot to get that particular data and information and that's not going to give you that much uh, input which you are looking out for the cost is more and the benefit is less it should not be like that the benefit should be more than the cost then only it is cost effective then it should be understandable it should not be in a language which is not understandable it should not be into heavy jargons which uh, cannot be understandable by non professionals of that particular field it should be understandable by everyone har ek ko samajh mein aana chahiye aisa nahi ke completely odd rahe aur samajh mein hi na aaye to thoda sa samajh mein bhi aana chahiye aur relevant hona chahiye information जितनी रेलेवेंट हो इन्फॉर्मेशन उतना अच्छा रहेगा ये ये पूरे एट्रीब्यूट है गुड इन्फॉर्मेशन के रेलेवेंट अगर इन्फॉर्मेशन रहेगी तभी आप यू नो यू कैन टेक थिंग्स फॉरवर्ड यू कैन गो बिट फर्दर व्हेन थिंग्स आर रेलेवेंट व्हेन इन्फॉर्मेशन इज रेलेवेंट एंड व्हेन इन्फॉर्मेशन इज अडेप्टेबल मीन्स यू कैन मेक यूज ऑफ इट इज नॉट जस्ट लाइक हाँ दिस इन्फॉर्मेशन इज देयर बट यू के नॉट यूज इट इट के नॉट बी लाइक दैट देन मूविंग फॉरवर्ड इट शुड बी timely available it should be timely available. like you know some information should be available on time it should not be like uh, you know you think about uh, you know this is the right time uh, for getting the information you should get that information when it is required it should not be like uh, yeah i need this information but i got it a bit late not going to work out for you so it depends on businesses to businesses that you need information like uh, for example like you know the lockdown was going to happen if you knew it at you know once the lockdown started everybody knew it if suppose you knew it a bit earlier that is going to be for a longer period of time then uh, then at least you can you know understand and make decisions for business and your data should be also your information should be easy to use it should not be like you know it's there in front of us but we don't know how to use it it should not be in that manner it should be easy to use also so these are the attributes of good information in fact an acronym in here acronym in the sense a c c u r a t e if you just see in here the the these terminologies this talks about accurate itself a c c u r a t e that's accurate information you can remember it in that form also that good information should be accurate possibly you can get questions out of these two now let's move forward now what is information systems and what is information technology information systems technology systems technology let me just share with you that what exactly you know is the major difference between information systems and technology information systems is the software is a software like this particular zoom software i am taking these sessions it's a software i am taking this session with the use of this uh, microphone it's technology information technology so information system is basically the software which is there inside and information technology is actually the hardware like this laptop is there that's information technology but the software inside it is information systems are you guys getting it with me what's the difference between information systems and technology if yes आप लोग को यहाँ पे चैट सेक्शन जो बाजू है वहां पे बताओ या नहीं तो नीचे कमेंट सेक्शन में बताओ कि ये सेशंस आपके लिए हेल्पफुल है यूजफुल है और आप लोग अच्छे से फॉलो अप कर रहे हैं या नहीं चैट सेक्शन में बताओ आप लोग राइट सो इंफॉर्मेशन सिस्टम्स इज दी सॉफ्टवेयर विच इज देयर इन साइड एंड इन्फॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी इज द हार्डवेयर क्वेश्चन भी आ सकता है ऐसा आपको ना मूविंग फर्दर अहेड types of information systems now there is transaction processing system management information system decision support system executive information system and expert system ab one by one aayenge hum yahan pe now for this understand that we've already learned the levels of strategy levels of strategy strategic planning tactical planning operational planning ya strategic level operational level and the middle level टैक्टिकल लेवल ये जो लेवल्स है ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के ये लेवल्स के हिसाब से इनका इंफॉर्मेशन सिस्टम्स का यूज होता है अब फॉर एग्जांपल व्हेन वी सी ट्रांजैक्शन प्रोसेसिंग सिस्टम नाउ व्हेन वी यूज ट्रांजैक्शन प्रोसेसिंग सिस्टम लेट मी जस्ट ट्राई पुटिंग इट डाउन इन हियर व्हेन वी यूज ट्रांजैक्शन प्रोसेसिंग सिस्टम दिस इज समथिंग व्हिच इज यूज्ड फॉर दोस पीपल हु आर इन देयर ट्रांजैक्शन मींस ऑपरेशनल लेवल ओके 
who are in their operational level these are the people who would be there in here transaction processing system is used by operational level people or those people who are at the ground staff operational staff now if you go to a mall okay if you go towards a mall or a hypermarket or a supermarket in there there you would find those uh, you know counters like you know that payment counters where you go and uh, put down your uh, stuff and say that okay this is what i want and you can please go ahead and bill it now when they are billing it they are actually using what they are using this transaction processing system the software which is there inside that's the information system which they are using the barcode scanner is their information technology which they are using in there that barcode scanner becomes your information technology those uh, you know software which is there inside which is billing it which is looking into what are the offers available and stuff that's the information system once you punch in all those data and that sale has gone through then the complete sales of that particular day or that particular time it goes on towards and shows in front of the management information system who are these people these are people in the tactical level tactical level of the organization what would they do they would look into that okay which product is getting sold okay this type of hard disk is getting sold more or this type of a phone is getting sold less now what can they do based on this based on this what they can do they can take decisions or they can actually forward what type of decisions can be taken towards the executive information system which is used by strategic level people now these strategic level people they'll have their own uh, system in there that's the executive information system in front of them and they will try using that and take decisions based on that okay now this is understood the okay, transaction processing system operational level people will use management information system tactical level people will use executive information system strategic people will use that is fine what is this dss and uh, es which is decision support system and expert system now this decision support system can be used by any level any level of uh, the organization now basically you are using this to make decisions now this will help you support in making decisions which one the decision support system now anything like you know there is a decision to be made and you're finding it a bit difficult decision support system will be there which will be having some of that you know understandability of your problem which you are into and then there is another type of a system which is always there available for the organization at large but mostly used by the enterprise uh, executive information system which is expert system these are professional uh, people in here in this particular system their particular opinions their particular information is there in this expert system like suppose you need uh, an uh, advice about uh, the income tax or you need an advice about one a particular law of uh, you know law of that particular land you can have lawyers barristers chartered accountants that type of expert advice in there in that particular expert system so all in all that's what is these information systems which are there available for you know organizations so that they can make use of it all right so let's move forward here what's happened yeah then coming up forward towards the software applications which are there available which you can use in business now these are literally basics which are spreadsheets databases accounting packages spreadsheets also called excel sheet okay microsoft excel is spreadsheet believe me uh to be more frank or i've seen this uh, at uh, many places that though these uh companies invest a lot in getting erps now invest a lot in getting erps in the sense like sap oracle and uh, you know microsoft d365 or many more like these are there they invest hugely in getting all these softwares but still they use excel and spreadsheets but still they use it and they cannot avoid it 
they cannot avoid using it on a daily basis they are going to use spreadsheets or excel now spreadsheets in the sense spreadsheets like a google spreadsheets or a google sheets also it's called a spreadsheet uh, microsoft excel is also a spreadsheet they invest huge in those applications but still use these type of softwares like you know microsoft excel google sheets i personally use google sheets on a daily basis daily basis i use google sheets all organizations were you know use these excel though they have all those big big softwares and erps still they use these spreadsheets they have proper databases which they store their uh, data in that now they are not talking about a big warehouse or stuff they are talking about just databases which are there in here for just storage of your data or it's an application it's not physically there in that and then accounting packages accounting packages like tally quickbooks where you know all these accounting systems is already in there all the accounting which you are going to do in your life it is already fed in these software application of accounting packages all right let's move forward towards computerization now when i talk about computerization the benefits which are there in computerization like see previously businesses used to happen manually like uh, you did not have all these high end computers these social media and stuff was not there so having this particular process even the accounting it was done physically on pen paper books now what has happened is it has been a bit leveled up for the past uh, couple of decades or three decades also you can say that it has been computerized but still there are many businesses which are yet to get completely computerized like if you just see in the small small businesses which are there nearby your home there are stuff there is uh, chances of improvement there are stuff like you know you can get into you know put your business process into computerization now computerization in the sense that starting from getting your products ordered from the manufacturer or the wholesaler getting it from him and uh, selling it to the customer getting feedback of customers everything in an automated process is something which you can do it while uh, while applying computerization so everything putting in computerization will make you much more agile and much more you know a bit uh, friendly in uh, doing business at a much faster pace now in that case what happens is you can you will be able to make decisions faster and once you are able to make decisions faster your business process can be improved at a faster note and that's what is the benefit of computerization i hope you guys are uh, you kids are uh, you know well aware about what computerization is what using of a mobile phone in business can be beneficial for business you know it much 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 better than me all right now moving forward towards uh, the next type which is cloud computing now wh- what exactly is cloud computing and uh, how businesses uh, run over it is because it's kind of an online uh, software where you can store data where you can store your businesses uh, data business process in there and it goes on in the same manner like uh, previously they used to have big big servers in which that data was installed and uh, you had to go towards the office and go in the office and work nowadays based on this uh, cloud computing you have a you know central cloud in which everything is uh, uploaded the work process is uploaded there and you take in reference with that particular uh, cloud and you can be anywhere and work on your particular you know business with that what happens is your business process does not get paused like suppose uh, i keep uploading all my um, videos over youtube or my own application what's that that's that, that's again a cloud there's no uh, you know physical location where it is so anybody can access it from wherever you are so that's what is the benefit of cloud uh, computing moving forward we have artificial intelligence machine learning machine learning comes under artificial intelligence now artificial intelligence is the best example for artificial intelligence is uh, your siri in the iphone and uh, your um, google what was that called my google i guess or uh, hey google that that's the google assistant 
which is an artificial intelligence intelligence and based on this artificial intelligence businesses have understood what process they go through and they have structured their business process in such a way that each and everything goes on with the same uh, understanding and there's a same process which goes on with it and uh, that's where artificial intelligence can be applied like uh, tesla has applied artificial intelligence and machine learning like how is this business how is this process going to happen again and again again and again into driving skills so there can be an autopilot uh, driving going on they can have their own sensors sensors through which machine learning they can understand okay which car is there front or back and with that particular sensors they take up a decision that whether they should break or whether they should accelerate more or what what should they do based on that like uh, one one example which is there like artificial intelligence is there in normally it is there in almost all cars that is uh, um, you know the cruise control now cruise control is something like you put down to a cruise limit of a car and uh, you go at that same speed that's one now that's the basic version now comes in the a bit of an advanced version of a cruise control where you have motion detectors and some machine learning also happens up there now in those motion detectors what happens is they look into like suppose you are going at a speed of 70 miles per hour or 60 miles per hour and uh, because i have used it and uh, that's that's the way i'm sh- showing sharing that with you and suppose the front car which is there in front of you is actually slowing down so what happens is your car which you are driving which you have set your uh, speed limit to 60 miles per hour that car also slows down automatically without you applying the brake that car also slows down automatically even it slows down until uh, you know if suppose your speed if the car in the front becomes zero your speed also becomes zero you are still on the cruise mode only then what happens is suppose if there's traffic signal you stop in there then it stops by itself you don't need to apply the brake also because it is following up now the next time when it the car in the front which starts moving that's the time when you need to press the accelerator and once you press the accelerator they try going up towards the speed in which you had set it but again it depends on the motion which is there in front if if the motion in front is a bit slow it will pick up slowly or else it can go up fast if it's a clear and uh, fast road so that that's what artificial intelligence is uh it's improving it's improving in those driving skills and it many other places also the, by uh, by which you are using up data and stuff artificial intelligence and making use of it so that's there in the market artificial intelligence machine learning how you can apply it in your business process like suppose i have to make a uh, glass okay i have to make this glass so how can i do it uh, you know in the best manner see making this glass uh, in the olden days they used to make it with uh, mud clay they used to put their hand mix it up rotate it uh, you know uska aakar banate the jaisa aapko chahiye and that was done usko suka do it was done but nowadays it is machines which is uh, making it so wo machine ko aur acha kaise process mein la sakte hain aap because you know how things how is the demand of the customer to usko aur acche uh, matlab structure mein kaisa la sakte hain aur uski quantity kaise improve kar sakte hain kaisa zyada bana sakte hain uski quantity that depends on your artificial uh, intelligence on how are the suggestions going to come up and also best examples for artificial intelligence is robots working at work okay now moving forward towards big data big data hum log starting starting mein bhi thodi thodi baat kar chuke hain iske bare mein jo main baat kar raha tha ki data ki madad se aap business ke decisions le rahe hain to same ye wahi data hai ye data ek jagah rahega chahe wo aapke business ka primary data ho ya phir publicly available data ho अब डेटा अवेलेबल होने के बेस्ट साइट्स विच आर देयर अवेलेबल लाइक यू कैन जस्ट गो ऑन टुवर्ड्स द बेस्ट साइट्स वेयर यू कैन गेट डेटा अबाउट इज लाइक फर्स्ट लेट मी जस्ट से अबाउट गूगल ट्रेंड्स ओके गूगल ट्रेंड्स इज वन ऑफ द बेस्ट यू नो वेयर प्लेस वेयर यू कैन गेट लाइक यू नो व्हाट पीपल आर सर्चिंग फॉर व्हाट थिंग इज ट्रेंडिंग what what thing people are searching about google more what is the more specific search which is happening is it a youtube search is it a google search is it something so isse kya hoga aapko aapke business decisions lene mein thoda sa fayda hoga then uh, you have another website called answer the public 
Now, answer the public is also a website where you see what people are searching, what people are thinking about. See, basically, is data say marketing may bhot jada help hota hai. Business ke marketing side may bhot jada help hota hai. Big data say. So that's where you need to take and also making decisions for businesses. It comes in here. All right. I hope you guys are there with me. And there is much more stuff about this. In the Kaplan text, Kaplan text में big data के बारे में और थोड़ा सा detail में है आपको मैं suggest करूँगा कि आप वो जाओ और पढ़ो. BPP के kit में थोड़ा सा कम है big data, machine learning and stuff is a bit less. It's like you know one one or two paragraph and that's it uh, done. Whereas in the Kaplan text वो थोड़ा ज़्यादा detail में है. और ये session के start में भी मैं जो आपको बताया हूँ data के बारे में अगर आप अभी देख रहे हैं ये session तो starting के session में भी Go see in there that what I've talked about, like data ke base, because decisions layer and businesses. All right. Moving forward, let's move towards the features of big data, which is volume, like, you know, in what volume you are getting it and what type of varieties are there about uh, the data and in what speed you are receiving matlab, data bante ja hai, content create hote ja hai. Uh, consumer preferences are coming, sale, purchase are coming, so data is coming. So that is the velocity in which you are getting it. And the fourth V is actually the veracity. Veracity is the truthfulness of the data. It means data is right in your hands, but is it right or not? We don't know. So the truthfulness of the data matters a lot. Okay, the genuineness of the data means it is true or false. We don't know. बहुत सारा data available है, uh, you know, like if you just see in here, uh, people take in references of lot of stuff which are biased. Now that's pretty normal. Like for example, देखो कि कोई अगर एक movie है, a movie can it be termed? Uh, can you take it as a data? Yes, you can take it as data. उसमें कितनी veracity होती है? We don't know about it. देखो movies normally बनाए जाते हैं for an opinion for a message to be delivered. Now, when you are having a message which is to be delivered, that uh, that will be a bit biased on whatever they are explaining that is going to be right and that will be there. The other side of the story will never be shown in that particular stuff. Now, moving forward in here with the benefits of big data. Now, with this big data, as I've said, you can drive in, you can bring in more innovations, you can have competitive advantage over your, uh, you know, competitors, you can have an advantage over them, because you are having the data and you can use that data. Best example is the Adam Smith and also those organizations, those aggregator based organizations which are taking advantage of it. Now, coming up with this particular, you know, big data that what consumers are buying, what they are selling, what they are actually preferring for businesses improving a productivity can happen based on that all right moving forward is the blockchain technology now blockchain technology they just one two lines in the bpp text which they talk about okay it is a decentralized ledger in which the records are you know put inside a block from one block to another block and each block in it's uh, coded on a, in another manner so that another so that people uh, so that it is independent and clean enough that's one stuff okay fine let let me just explain that to you in here if it's possible see blockchain technology yes it is a decentralized ledger what happens is data is stored in blocks data is stored in blocks now when it is stored in blocks what happens is suppose uh, the data which is stored in blocks if you want and see all this data is connected with one two and then another block is there it keeps on getting added on in blocks so it's a decentralized ledger suppose i have to make any changes in here i have to put down the passwords of this particular data to decrypt this data and then encrypt it again and then again, I need to do it here also, do it here also, do it here also. Each particular block has a different password, has a different type of uh, stuff in there, st type of password in there, which you need to enter so that you can decrypt it, enter which you want to, and then move forward. So what happens in here is that like, suppose, uh, like in Andhra Pradesh, land records, land records, like who is the owner of this particular land, from the start till end, like you know who bought it then who sold it to whom then who sold it to whom 
like that is getting stored in data data in your blocks 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 it is getting stored now what happens is chances of people manipulating that you oh, know this is my land not not your land the chances of that manipulation goes down but still there are some challenges that you know there can be people who have uh, you know used this type of uh, stuff and uh, you know there is a possibility of a slight slight possibility that fraud can happen because this is overall a man made thing only it's not something which has come from above so there is possibility that there is fraud also तो यहाँ पे और एक बात यह है कि ये जब आप पासवर्ड एंटर करते हैं डिक्रिप्ट करके एनक्रिप्ट करते जाते रहते हैं एक बार एक के बाद एक एक के बाद एक प्रोसेस करते करते तो उसका एक बाय प्रोडक्ट क्रिएट होता है तो वो बाय प्रोडक्ट इज नथिंग बट विच इज राइट नाउ लिटरली वेरी फेमस अराउंड विच इज क्रिप्टो करेंसी ओके दैट्स दी क्रिप्टो करेंसी विच गेट्स क्रिएटेड आउट ऑफ दीज यू नो ब्लॉक्स ये ब्लॉक्स के अंदर या फिर आप एंटर करो या फिर एंटर करके कुछ चेंज करो या कुछ ऐड करो कुछ डिलीट करो वैसे प्रोसेस में आगे बढ़ते बढ़ते ये आ, मतलब क्रिप्टो जनरेट होते हैं उसमें क्रिप्टो करेंसी इज क्रिप्टो करेंसी इट इज नॉट बिटकॉइन बिटकॉइन इज वन ऑफ द क्रिप्टो करेंसी नाउ दैट गोइंग टू बी अ डिफरेंट सेशन आफ्टर ऑल इफ यू वॉन्ट गो हेड विद दैट वील हैव अ डिस्कशन अबाउट इट लेटर बट फॉर नाउ अंडरस्टैंडिंग ब्लॉक चेन बेसिक्स ऑफ ब्लॉक चेन इतना काफी है आप लोग को ये बिजनेसेस में इंटीग्रेट करने से बिजनेसेस का स्ट्रक्चर थोड़ा सा स्ट्रॉन्ग हो जाएगा थोड़ा ज्यादा डिसेंट्रलाइज हो जाएगा दैट्स व्हाट वी आर लर्निंग फ्रॉम दिस ओके देयर इज अ लॉट टू लर्न फ्रॉम हियर एनी हाउ व्हेन टाइम परमिट्स वी विल बी डूइंग दैट आल्सो ऑल राइट आपके सिलेबस में है नहीं होगा देन कमिंग अप टूवर्ड साइबर सिक्योरिटी ना साइबर सिक्योरिटी वॉट ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ फ्रॉड्स एंड एरोज आर देयर अराउंड विच आर टू बी अवॉइडेड now how are they to be avoided like suppose there is malware there is viruses there is trojan horses across systems all the time matlab the virus is going to be there in the system or going to come into the system there are many instances which is possible ab businesses ko protected rakhna hai to fir aapko you should have proper passwords proper system firewalls which is there you should have proper security systems in place so that you can avoid any physical problems coming in and also any software problems which can come and affect your business these all stuff should be avoided and that's why cyber security is really really important in your business because uh, another phishing attack phishing attack is something like you tend to be someone and in that particular sense they may give up your data or you you enter into a web, like you know the one of the best uh, phishing attack is kind of you know you one iphone 13 just enter your uh, some basic details to get that what happens is when you enter that particular details the hacker is getting your information so when you have to log in over there you enter your email id your password and according to psychology maximum people keep the same password for everything so when you enter that particular password uh they have your email id and password and uh, in that basic information they also have your phone number so that's gone in there so that's kind of a sufficing attack and that can happen for businesses and it has already happened which has costed a lot hackers are there always there are new types of hacking which is happening so we need to be a bit uh, aware in that too all right so now we've come towards the end of uh, today's uh, session which is information systems and information technology in businesses i hope that this session is highly helpful for you and you've learned a lot from it i would highly recommend you guys to go back read the kaplan text and also the bpp text though it is a bit less no problem go ahead read it try making notes out of it try solving the test your understandings which are there in that and uh, come back to me over the comment section or the live chat section and i'll be really happy to listen to your feedback about it all right so thank you very much and i'll see you guys in the next session all right